What is going on guys? In this video, I want to talk to you about my absolutely favorite IDE for development, and that is of course JetBrains IntelliJ. And that's exactly what I have in front of me here. This is the IntelliJ editor. Now, before I get into that, I just want to comment that I've used a lot of different editors in my career. I've used things like Vim and Emacs, more recently Sublime Text and Visual Studio Code. But I always, always, always come back to this IDE because it has everything that I'm looking for. It's got a very feature packed environment. There's a whole bunch of plugins and tools and everything just works in this editor. It's intuitive. It's easy to understand. It's just, it's built by developers for developers. So uh, that's kind of the context of this video. Someone that's tried a lot of different things out and just keeps on coming back to the same thing. Uh, so like I said, this is IntelliJ. Uh, it's an editor that is built with the Java developer in mind. So a lot of the features that you'll find are specific to Java development, but it also does have a very feature rich plugin environment where you can download plugins that allow support for all these other types of languages like Ruby, C, C++, uh, Python, Go. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of different uh, plugins that are available to help you support all these other languages. But like I said, it's particularly for the Java developer in mind. So let's just take a little tour of what's going on in this project, kind of like how the editor is set up. Uh, it's pretty intuitive. It makes a lot of sense. Um, you just have your project menu that I like to keep on my side here. You can move these panels around, put it like on the bottom or the right if you want. There's also on the bottom section, some additional details or some additional modules so you can have an in IDE terminal so that you know you have access to your terminal really quickly. Uh, also integrates really well with Git. So if you want to you know have your IDE that integrates with Git, but you get a visual element of using Git, then you can do so. I just typically use the command line. Uh, in the center, we have our main screen here. This is where the, the code writing actually happens. Now I have a custom color scheme that I particularly built to my liking. You'll note here that we're in white here. A lot of people don't like white, but I personally do. Uh, but what you'll find is that there's a whole bunch of different themes that you can download uh, to your liking. So if we go to the, the website for IntelliJ over here, these are all the different themes. There's so, so many. One of the most popular is the material theme here, but you can just kind of find what you are looking for. If you like kind of that Monokai or you like the Solarize theme, there's the Monokai one that I've tried as well. It looks pretty nice. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of different themes that you can easily download. You just download an XML file and link it with your account. Uh, the other great thing that I like is the fact that once you set up an account, if you're switching between computers, you're setting synchronize across uh, your different computers. And that's a very, very handy thing, especially for me. I have um, different machines that I like to work on. I have my Linux machine, I have my Windows machine, I have a Mac. So even though I'm switching between computers all the time, I'm always gonna have some consistent settings. So the center of the screen here is the editor where you're probably gonna be spending a majority of your time. It's got things like intuitive autocomplete. So if we do like flat behavior dot, you get access to all the methods that it has and anything that can be applied to it as well. Uh, I really like the autocomplete portion because it tends to work well with suggesting names. So for instance, if we do like private in name, it's going to automatically detect that I'm probably going to want to make an accessor for this guy. So if you could just go public, you can see here that it's already suggesting things that make sense. Uh, even the refactoring portion of this. So if say we have a method like public void set name and it takes int name and this thing is this dot name is equal to name. Um, you can do some refactoring on this name attribute here, and it's also going to rename all of this stuff too. So for instance, if we go here, uh, we go to refactoring and rename, let's just say it's, um, I don't know, it's not name. Um, um, first name is what I like. So it's going to change the setter and it also sets the name of the function as well, which is pretty neat. It doesn't just refactor the variable that you're modifying. I mean, these are some of the small features that I really, really like. It's also got things like code generation. So I think it's alt insert. Yeah. So you can create a constructor with this getter and setter equals hash code, super, super fancy stuff. So you just press that and it's going to automatically do this all for you. So these are the, some of the features that I find myself using a lot. Um, but there's a lot to this editor. And once you get a handle on all the shortcuts, you're going to find them very, very useful. You can tell that this thing is built by developers with the developer experience in mind. Um, and the neat thing is that if you're using different libraries or there's something that you don't like in particular about the editor, then there's a very, very rich plugin environment. And we can access that plugin environment one of two ways. We can go to the file menu and go to settings here 
and you know find the plugin menu there's you know it's a whole bunch of different things here that you need to look through now the really nice thing that i like about this editor itself and all the intellij editors is the find anywhere feature so on windows if you double tap shift you get the find anywhere uh, and with this, you can pretty much search anything. You can search class names, you can search settings, you can search anything you want. So if I just type in font, you see that this is auto detecting for font settings that uh, I can diff I can change. And this will, if I click this, it'll, it'll, or if I press enter rather, it'll bring me up to the option menu where this particular setting is located. Uh, so really, really useful stuff. Um, so if we were looking here for plugins, but before I do that, say you're looking for a particular class, you can either type in the, the whole class. Uh, for instance, I have one on the side here called fly with wings. So I can type in fly with wings to access that quickly. I can also just type the, um, the capitalized letter. So F W W and it's going to auto detect it's fly with wings. So very, very intelligent autocomplete, which is something you'll find pretty consistently with using the IDE, um, all over the place. So I think I said I was looking for plugins just to show you that so you can go and find your plugins here. And um, these are some of the plugins that I have installed here. Actually, this is just the marketplace. So it has a very, very rich marketplace where you find something that isn't supported by IntelliJ by default. There's a whole bunch of different folks that have created all these different plugins, some of them by companies, some of them by individual people. Uh, so you can take a look. This is just part of the, the default view here. Um, but you can search for different ones. There's hundreds, if not thousands of different plugins. One that I'm always using is like something like Lombok with Java so that I get um, annotation support so I can quickly find things. And there's a whole bunch of different things here, but you can see like some of the ones that I have installed AWS Toolkit. I use IdeaVim a lot, which lets me use Vim within the editor, which is a great idea, by the way, if you don't know Vim, uh, I highly suggest you learn it. I have a video on that I'll put at the end of the video and in the description. Uh, also got Lombok, of course. And this is what I originally wanted to show you, which is that um, although this is a Java IDE, it's got support for all these different languages. So I use Node, Python, Ruby, uh, and Scala sometimes. There's other ones for Go, C, um, other languages as well. Pretty much any uh, product that IntelliJ has on their um, their tool chain. Uh, so RubyMine, um, Go Everywhere, uh, C Lion. Any product that it has, it'll have a plugin in IntelliJ for, so then you can use it. You're not going to get all the features though. For instance, like in JavaScript or sorry, in WebStorm, which is the the kind of web development, you're going to get a lot of features that are tailored for web development in there. Um, just like in IntelliJ, you get a lot of features that are tailored for Java development. But that's not to say that this is just for Java development. This is just what it does primarily well. But you can get away with using, you know, uh, or writing JavaScript in IntelliJ. You're just not going to get that super feature rich environment if you were using something like WebStorm. Uh, so the plugins thing is like, that's a huge part of it. Why this is such a uh, great product and why I suggest it to so many people, because if there's something that doesn't exist, you can pretty much always find a tool that does it for you. Um, other than that, I think the UI is super, super intuitive. Like I said, everything just kind of makes sense. Uh, you got this gutter section that I use a lot. Um, so this will kind of show you different hints. So we can see that this perform fly function is being overridden by a method in the duck class. So, you know, you can go and find it really quick. And um, it's got other annotation support here. It shows that this class is being overridden. There's so many other different options as well. So there's like spring support. So it'll show you when something is a bean. Um, it'll show you kind of where that bean is used throughout the project. So it integrates really, really well with all of these different uh, types of software as well, in addition to just writing your code. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, of course, the price. Now, you'll be happy to know that you don't have to buy IntelliJ and pay the full price to get all of its features. There's actually a community edition where you can just try it out. It's pretty much just like a pared down version of IntelliJ Ultimate, which is what the, pair, the paid product is. So if you just want to get your hands dirty and give this thing a try, then you can just go ahead and go to the IntelliJ website and download it. I'll put a link in the description section below so you can check it out. Now, say you do like it and you want access to all the features. Um, it is a little bit of a steep price. So um, here I am on the IntelliJ website. So for the first year, IntelliJ Ultimate is $4.99. And if you keep it for more years after that, it's decreasing by 100 bucks every year. If you want to do the monthly billing, it's a little bit more expensive at the flexibility of being billed monthly. Now, keep in mind, though, if you're going to buy this, this is just for IntelliJ Ultimate. 
You might as well go the extra mile and get the all products pack for $64.90. And this includes all of the other awesome tools by JetBrains. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video at all. This is truly like what I use and what I believe are good products. So I'm just standing behind the, the products that IntelliJ built just because I've used them a lot uh, for a very long time in my career. And I just want to kind of pay it forward so that you guys can, you know, try it out if you're interested as well. Um, so these are all the different products that come with it. So IntelliJ ID, of course. Another great one is DataGrip for interacting with different databases in a pretty neat IDE. It's also got all your um, your syntax highlighting and, and language support as well. There is PHP Storm for PHP, PyCharm for Python, ReSharper, which is I believe used for uh, C Sharp, um, and then this one is for C++. Don't know what writers for RubyMine for Ruby, WebStorm for web development, Go for Go. There's a whole bunch of different ones here you can check out. Keep in mind that they do have a program where if you are a student or faculty at a university, you can get all this stuff uh, without having to pay anything, at least while you are either employed or a student. Um, so I, I can't remember the website where you go to set that up, but just type in IntelliJ student discount and you should be able to find it. Um, for a long time when I was a student, I had access to all of these things just because I was learning and now I use it throughout my careers. Um, now I, it wouldn't be fair for me to just talk about the positive things about using IntelliJ without talking about some of the negative things. And I only really have two complaints here. Uh, the first one is, now this point is just something small that I don't really like. Um, th this editor isn't built for just like opening up small files and editing them and just for saving it and forgetting about it. It's more catered to setting up projects. This is a heavy weight, heavy lifter IDE that's feature packed. So it can be a little bit intense on uh, your memory. So just keep that in mind if you have a, a slightly smaller machine. Now, if you have some really big projects as well with lots of different dependencies, the indexing phase can take forever. But I honestly think like this isn't a very big price to pay because this indexing thing is kind of a one-time shot uh, when you set up your project. And afterward, you get this very, very feature-rich autocomplete that kind of considers all of the different files you have in your project. So I consider it just kind of a cost of doing business. It's something that you only pay once, but afterwards it makes itself really useful uh, from that point forward. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Take care.